Christmas trees. Hi, my name is Michael from Product. Welcome to this video. So we're gonna go out and do some field recording today of some nice forest scenes. Uh, we're here in Lindsay Lohan's Stubb Stewart Park. Um, it's in Oregon. There seems to be some forest fires going on in this region. Um, you can't tell in the video right now that I can see, uh, but it's definitely foggier than normal, kind of hazy from the smoke, uh, which makes everything kind of spooky. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna go fuck with some branches and see if we can get some recordings in. No, no, leave me alone. Do you see? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Welcome back. So there aren't a lot of sounds in the forest that I want to get. We've done a few of these sessions today um, and a couple weeks ago. Um, and mostly what I use them for is under layers and some of the tracks and some of the weird distorted elements. Uh, I just wanted to kind of take a second to kind of give you an idea of how a lot of the weird stuff you don't really hear happens. And it's mostly because I live in Oregon, I want to include the surroundings. I like the forest a lot. A lot of the lyrics have a very centrally foresty theme. Um, they have a lot of witchcraft and weird stuff that takes place in the wintery forest. It's summer now, but you get the idea. Um, so a lot of elements that I wanted to include uh, for this third album is natural elements. I wanted to get some of what I have surrounding me in the forest and stuff like that into the actual record. And so this is the first time I'm experimenting with field recording. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of sitting around for the most part, but it's worth it um, to have the kind of weird stuff that happens naturally with the wind and stuff. And then when you amplify that with distortion and weird reverbs, it gets kind of crazy. So hope you like it. So one of the main questions was what makes this album different? previous product album. So this is the third full-length release. Um, I released a few EPs here and there uh, in between. Uh, this is the third one and for me it's the most uh, original one in the sense that the first one, I Omega, I really tried for a sound. Like it was my goal to get a very specific club sound, a very specific Agrotech at the time sound. And one that came out I think that that style was done already. I think that that genre was dead. Um, I think that it's still popular, of course, in certain parts of the world, but not in America, definitely not. And I think it's kind of going out of favor for the most part. And so my goal for that one was to release a full length album and get on a label, and I did. Uh, and that was Cop International in uh, California, here in America. And they also are a Black Rain subsidiary, but um, it did okay. It didn't do well. Um, did about 112 albums uh, physical, and there was four returns, which I don't know what that means. But everything that I sold on the road sold. Um, not a whole lot in the stores sold. So it's kind of one of those things where you have to go out and make sure that you see people and you talk to people and you play the shows because it's not going to just go by itself in the store. Um, especially when you don't really have um, the right promotion tactics yet. You don't really know. Um, and, and Shallow Graves, the second full-length album on Vendetta, did pretty similarly, actually. It did, it did okay. Um, I sold out all of my physical copies. I think I have like four or five left that I've reordered from the label. 
Um, so I've sold about 300 albums, um, and the label itself has sold about uh, 24, 25 um, digitally, and then I'm not sure physically. I haven't gotten those numbers really. And so it, it does okay. Uh, again, it, I sold more on the road. Uh, we went to Terminus Festival two years ago now, and, uh, and that really helped. We sold a lot of our stuff there. Uh, we did a small, uh, no, that was for I Omega. We did a small jaunt from Portland, Seattle, Boise, and Salt Lake, and that was that was very helpful. We sold out there. Um, we did a few dates with God Module for the Shallow Graves album, and that was beneficial for sure. We definitely sold a few things, especially uh, playing in San Francisco for the first time. That was really cool. And so with with the third album, which is called I Used to Think Everything Was Beautiful. I really wanted to kind of divorce what I was doing before and collect all of my personal influences, my personal likes and dislikes, and and make an album that I, I, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed making. I really felt that it was the most um, emotionally felt album for me. And what I mean by that is that like a lot of times when you're making a, an album for a label, it's not um, it's not always for you, which it should be. It really should be. Um, and, and you can tell when it is. You can tell when someone makes an album and it's uh, it's for them. And this is definitely for me. It's got a lot of folk influences. It's got a lot of black metal influences. It's got a lot of witch house influences. A lot of stuff that I've kind of rediscovered this year and last year and brought all into the product sound. So there's a lot more orchestral elements to it, which I really enjoyed doing for the last couple albums, but we were very low in the mix. Um, and it's got a lot of kind of weird, obscure things for me. Maybe not for you, but for me, it's very obscure um, in my sound because my my instinct is to make really dancey, like four on the floor club stuff because it's easy for me. I, I like it. It's easy. Um, I can get into that rhythm pretty simply. So what I try to do for this third album was make it not that. Uh, I think that shows. Everything's pretty slow. Um, I think the fastest track is like 112 BPM, which is pretty slow. <laughs> and so I think that it'll go over well. I hope it'll go over well, I guess I should say. Is I hope I hope it will go over. Um, either way, though, I did it the way that I'm doing it the way that I want to do it. Um, I'm, I'm, I made all the tracks real slow, not so screamy. Uh, I'm doing all the artwork. I'm doing these videos. Um, I'm sending it off for mixing and mastering, and that's going to be great. It's someone that I really personally enjoy, and so that will be fun. And, and it hasn't been picked up by a label yet. As I've been making these videos, it hasn't been picked up. Um, I talked to Vendetta about it, and they were iffy about the slow stuff. So we'll see. Um, I'm talking to some other labels, and either way, it's going to come out um, on Bandcamp or however. And I'm really excited about it. I'm excited for all you guys to hear it. Um, I think that a lot of the influences that I've gotten for this album have been really separated from the industrial side of things. Um, like Muskox, for example, is kind of a blackened neo-folk band from Canada. Um, Agalock is a, a local, you know, uh, Cascadian black metal band, stuff like that. Really like epic music in general. Uh, I've been trying to take all these influence and all these bands that I really love and just put it into how I want to express it. And so it's a really strange mixture of like industrial styled witch house with a lot of orchestral black metal sounds. I don't know. It's going to be fun. This is what I'm going to say. It's going to be really fun. So a lot of people ask, you know, what advice do you have for people just starting out? And, you know, three albums isn't, isn't that big of a feat. It's not, um, when you think about people who are really popular in the industry, popular in the very small niche audience we have, um, three albums is nothing. It's just getting started. Uh, but a lot of people have trouble, and it is it is difficult getting to that first album, getting to that place where you can convince somebody else to be like, yes, I want to produce it, put this out on the label, you know. And and that's hard. It's very hard. And for me, it's still hard. Um, I think that the best advice that I have is just, first of all, like learn, learn how to fail and learn how to be okay with it. Don't, don't take things personally. It's not, it's nobody else out to get you mostly. And so when you're, 
when something doesn't go your way or uh, you ask for a tour and it doesn't happen or you set up a whole tour and then it all falls apart, which happens a lot, um, it's okay. It's just you just got to keep going because at the end of the day, the truth is that I personally would be doing this anyway. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. Um, a, a lot of the things that get you going, though, are, are just making really cool merchandise and, and talking to people and playing the shows that you want to play and not that, that you think you have to. I mean, because because when it's all over, it's just you doing things that you want to do. It's not um, all business ventures. Like there's some things that I've done and that I still do because I think it'll be good for business. Um, but for the most part, it's it's just coming together with the ideas that you have, you know, and convincing other people that this is what you are, this is what you want to be, and so. What I do now is is just make really cool merchandise, <laughs> you know. I just try to make cool looking shirts that I like, that I would buy and wear. Um, cool stickers, you know, cassettes, stuff like that. The CD designs are, are going to be made for, by me now. And um, I used Vlad McNeely before and he's really, really great. Um, it's just for this album I'm going to do it myself, so we're going to see how it goes. Uh, but my advice really is just make a cool shirt. Uh, ones, one that you would want to buy, you know, make a lot of stickers, make really interesting stickers. I think it's one of the been the it's, it's been one of the biggest uh, things that's helped me along is stickers, which is strange. Um, but there's the I hope you choke sticker. That one's really popular. It's very, um, it's very much indicative of what we do with product. Uh, I like to hand them out and see people's reactions, and it's funny, and I have a good time doing it. And uh, people ask for them, which is great. And so. If you're just starting out, you know, just don't overdo it. Don't order 300 t-shirts because you're not going to sell them. Just order 50. And then when those sell, order 50 more. And, you know, take it one step at a time and don't don't get a bunch of credit cards and, and do dumb stuff because it's not going to work out for you. It's just, um, you have to do it yourself. You have to do it for yourself and, and with yourself. And so don't take it personally. Be cool. My biggest piece of advice is be cool. So, when you... Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, don't say something. Yeah, it's like a big mistake. <laughs> okay. When you think about how hard it is to kind of get that first one off the, off the 